Hello and welcome to Simon Heals. My name is Simon and um, I'm really excited today to be meeting up with Celine O'Donovan, who this isn't the first time that we've got together <clears throat> um, to record a conversation. We, we've had several conversations uh, that we don't record, but um, and just recently we started to have um, a conversation around spiritual laws and also their, their relationship with our health as well. And um, it was such a good conversation that we thought, right, let's, let's do this again and record it and share it. So I'm really uh, hoping that today we'll be able to kind of capture the energy of that initial conversation that we had and the, the kind of the essence of it. Um, so, um, yeah. Welcome, Celine. Good to see you. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> Great <laughs> to be here and uh, <laughs> again. And yeah, looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, me, me too. Me too. And um, I think how this started was, um, well, how did this start? I think it was something, a subject that was kind of like coming into your onto your kind of radar and then exactly yeah exactly i think it, it has been coming on my radar recently because i'm trying to find nearly a language or a maybe this isn't the right way to go about it or, or a system mm. or some sort of way of understanding what i'm learning through the process of being ill so i know i've mentioned this before on the channel but i had breast cancer in 2016 six years ago and so much has happened and shifted and changed in me for the better. And it's, you know, I want to share that with other people. I don't want to support maybe others who are going through what I was going through then. And I happened one day to be, you know, pulling things together and reading different things. And I came across these universal laws. And I've heard mm -hmm. people talk about natural law, law of nature, spiritual laws, universal laws, different names. So I started searching on YouTube and I just found some really in interesting information mm. that resonated with me. Now, mm. I'm no expert at all. I've literally just dipped my toe in, but it's really helped me rather than because the whole journey for me was from outward to inward to mm. sort of being plugged into the world outside and letting that dictate my life in mm. some respects without even knowing to plugging out, which I did for a few years, um, and through illness and came to a very quiet place, and I started to plug in inside. And I started to realize, okay, there is another way of living, but how do I, sort of going deeper into that, I suppose, and understanding that there are natural laws and nature, I think maybe just being out in nature over the last few years, every single day, mm. and I've found myself stopping at different seasons, different times, looking at the leaves falling off the trees now, looking at a really, um, yesterday I went down at sunset and the sea was really wild and powerful. And I just felt, wow, you've got that inside you. You've got that yeah. power. So all of this, I think it really started with shift in myself obviously but also being out in the natural world and because the natural world understands the natural laws it is you know it, it's it's a manifestation i suppose isn't it hmm. of the, yeah hmm. so yeah that's sort of what's brought me and it's trying to sort of capture i hope maybe i'd love to hear your perspective just to give you an example i read yesterday about one of the laws the law of gender which i was oh what's that and maybe there were different perspectives or views. I don't know. This was just one that was 12. And it was really talking about the masculine and feminine balance within us. That's really what it was about. Mm -hmm. And it was saying that creativity comes from embracing both the masculine and the feminine. And creation, if we think of creation, <laughs> you know, it's the masculine and feminine. And it was just how it was put. I said, okay, well, I had no balance of those genders, let's say masculine and feminine within me. You know, the right, left side of the brain, the intuition, the logic, the doing, mm. the, the, the more intuitive, reflective. Um, 
So even that, you know, I just straight away identified, you know, I was totally out of balance in that area and many others. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually been quite reassuring to go something that intuitively I was sensing. I'm beginning to see, ah, OK, this is I was plugged into an artificial world. And I'm now plugging back into a more natural, organic way of being is how I feel. Um, and it is how we are designed to live, you know, isn't it? It's, mm. um, yeah, mm. it's a long winded, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you, you, you know, you covered, you covered a lot there, really. So, <clears throat> but what I really took, take from what you just said is that you experienced breast cancer. Now, prior to that, you were living out of alignment with nature and the natural laws. Exactly. Yeah. And, yes. and that through the process of healing from that disease, which was caused by that misalignment, mm -hmm. it, has, it has almost forced you back into alignment. Uh, as a necessity to come back to health. So really, we, I think from that, and I would very much suggest this, that our health is really directly proportionate to our alignment with nature and uh, our own inherent nature. Each of us has our own nature within that. So we've got mm -hmm. the kind of broader nature in the broader sense as us as being part of the natural world then each of us has our own nature which we again we must be um aligned with and mm. expressing and really embodying yeah, which some people mm. refer to this also as, as our truth, our personal truth. We need to be yeah. embodied, don't we, and live yeah. our personal truth. And that how disease, in a way, is a mechanism that mm. warns us when we're out of alignment and in order to heal, brings us back into alignment. Yeah. yeah so i that's yeah. kind yeah. kind of what i take from no that's saying. lovely that's exactly it yeah <laughs> more succinctly said than me but that's exactly it um you know and isn't it interesting the language and everything the way mm. we're speaking that i think i found as well i'm beginning to get maybe this is why i have a sore throat beginning to get the confidence to speak that truth more because it's a language and a way of understanding the world that is very different to what we've been taught since mm -hmm. or what I was taught definitely growing up. And I still, I found myself as I've shifted, trying to sh shifting the conversations, but it, it's it's not easy in a, in a world that's still predominantly in the old um, disease is something awful that befalls you and it's random and there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand where people are, but it, it, it's trying to find a way, like you said, to come into your own unique, truth which is what i think our experiences don't they our life experiences are sort of paving the way for mm. us to really shine our truth in the world um because every single experience i've had and it's been very healing um and in undoing a lot of the things that i was taught <laughs> are leading me to my own truth and sharing that with the world but it's it's like what you said their disease being a net mechanism to bring you back into balance um mm. you know i can't you know there's it, that's still something isn't it very i don't know how you find that but i would say that in my case to everyone that has been my passion and that's why i wrote a book on the topic and i speak very personally because i'm very conscious of ever you know um I suppose it, it, it's it's part of I suppose my own journey to be able to say that more powerfully I think in the world because mm. I think what you said there is just so important and it is so empowering and so freeing uh, um, you know that was the most amazing thing for me to to finally 
see, I actually said life, I remember feeling life is beginning to make sense to me. Finally, mm. it took cancer for life to start making sense. And I've said that to so many because it's the truth. Mm. Um, nothing of how I've been taught how to live. I'm sure you have the same experience. I'd be interested to hear as well, you know, in terms of where it led you to now that I just remember so many days and looking around at other people going, do they not? they're not feeling what I'm feeling mm. this isn't making sense so it's been a wonderful journey to sort of find a way of living which I have and it's still a work in progress that unbeknownst to me is sort of in tune with the natural laws or the laws of nature you know it sort of happened um in its own way so it's a lovely way I always find I need a way to sort of capture the essence of what's happening and maybe to be able to um Talk to, and I think it's a wonderful way to be able to talk to people. People can, if you start, if I started talking very spiritually or about God and source, that will resonate with some people, but not with everyone. But I think when you start talking about nature and natural laws, and, you know, I think most people I found even mentioning it too, can sort of it resonate somewhere in them, mm. um, maybe more easily. Mm. Um, so I think it's a, it's a really useful um yeah hmm. way to understand yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean certainly my experience growing up in england um a very kind of ordinary upbringing um but i was very much educated through through the systems of education which start in the family because of because my parents like like many parents themselves were educated educated basically means brainwashed if you translate the word it, it basically means mm. mind controlled so um mm. so i was mind controlled um as is nearly everyone to believe that we have these certain roles that we have to play in life and that there are certain there's a certain definition or definitions of what success is so it, you know in terms of career achievement material achievement and those kind of things um you know maybe it also involves getting married to a certain kind of person mm -hmm. um mm -hmm having a certain kind of family etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. and also part of that education was to believe and to understand and believe that all of this takes effort it takes it takes dedication that there's going to be sacrifice involved that there's competition that there is um yeah that if you want something in life then there's a price to pay all these kind of kind of mm. beliefs and a way and way and, and ways about going about life and i've spoken to many many people about this over the years and, and many people can kind of relate to that um you're nodding your head so i guess you could mm. kind of relate Absolutely. i think most people can kind of relate to that mm. Mm. and that of itself there's a there's an there's a friction in that there's a lack of flow there's it, it takes our energy it it literally we mm. we're using energy to to achieve things in life and make things happen and this burns people out this burns us out and this makes mm. us sick and sure enough it made sick it made me sick as it made you sick mm. and it makes many many people sick and if you look at us as a collective species we're sick because this is how we've been living and so as with you you know the well firstly the kind of medical system the system that made me sick didn't make me wasn't going to make me better anytime you know um i soon realized that so i had to look at alternatives um and now i'm about i don't know 16 17 years on from that and that's taken me down a very different kind of life path where i'm 
I'm, I've really dedicated my life to not only continuing my own healing journey, but to supporting others on their healing journey. But a big part of this has been realizing, researching, understanding what you're referring to here as natural laws, universal laws. I, I call them spiritual laws. Mm. And what I've realized through this is that there is a completely different way of living that you can almost turn all of that on its head. And it's about lack of effort, lack of resistance. Mm. It's about flow. It's about things come easily. It's about collaboration, not co competition. You know, synergy. Mm. And, and these kind of... So I have put together, and it, it was interesting that you asked me about this, because I actually, I do a workshop mm. on this here at the retreat in Thailand. So once a week, mm. we do an evening workshop, which is on the spiritual laws and the law of attraction. So, oh wow, I didn't so, know that. <laughs> yeah, no, you wouldn't, you yeah. wouldn't know that. No. Um, <laughs> but so it You'll is. You'll have to do that. <laughs> so, Bring it well, online. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will actually. And actually, I think what I'd really like to do is to offer the notes to this in the comments below. I'll, I'll leave a link, and if anyone wants to download these, um, fantastic. Yeah, and. Um, now oh, wonderful yeah. now these on you know you were just telling me about you just heard about this law of gender now i've never heard of that before and i don't i'm not sure that there is a definitive set of laws mm. yeah um, yeah because i so, yeah yeah but i want to share with you the i've identified 11 main laws okay okay Great. and mm -hmm. and um these for me are about how do we shift from living a life misaligned with nature, the natural laws, our own true nature, back into alignment, out of a life of effort, inertia, stress, where we're maybe chasing goals that aren't our goals they're the goals that have been um given to us by our societies and our families and our culture and our religions and our etc etc you know yeah yeah um so this is really about finding our own true purpose our own innate nature and then being able to live in alignment with that so would you like me to share these I'd just love one that. by yeah. one? So I'll go yeah, through each fantastic. of them and maybe we can just kind of mm. dissect each one of them or a little bit and tell me yeah. what you think. Yeah. And maybe you've got more to add and we can build on this. But so the first first law, I try to put them in an order that kind of makes sense. So the first law is the law of pure potential. And if you, you know, if you have even a kind of basic understanding of quantum physics and my understanding is only basic mm. that all energy exists in potential at any given moment and what that energy manifests as being is very much dependent on the observer of that energy so it's called the observer effect in quantum physics and um mm yeah there's <clears throat> yeah, so I've heard of that. Yeah. you've heard it you've heard of that and um mm -hmm. so another way of saying that is what we experience as the world around us is only there because we are observing it if we didn't observe it it's just energy okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so we can so we are literally creating through the process of being the witness of being the observer so our mm. role is to observe. So rather than doing, 
So we get away from that doing energy to make things happen. And then this is when we get into manifestation by observing, yes. by, by becoming the observer. And in order to do that, we need to spend time in silence. You can't observe when you're busy doing, mm. you know, and you've got that constant mm. mental chatter going on. And this is where yeah. practices like meditation are so, so important. Because when you meditate as the observer of yourself, then you are literally sitting creating your experience. And this is when you combine meditation with like visualization practices, yes. for example. That's so, yeah. so powerful. You're, you're actually yeah. starting that process of bringing something into being, you know? So yeah. what do you think of that? How does that? Oh, I think that's wonderful. It isn't one that I came, it probably is, you know, probably people describe mm. them differently. Um, but absolutely, when you started, I suppose while I just replying that to my own life and how yeah. it has started to take shape is shortly after I had cancer and I was in a bit of transition, I ended up doing the Artist Way course, um, the book by Julia Cameron, for anyone who hasn't heard of it. I had already been brought into a very silent, still place because mm. everything really had shut down, you know, my physical body, my mind. So I felt all that chatter unbeknownst this was all sort of unconscious at the time sort of just quiet and quiet and quietened down and when I and then I so I was doing the artist way but just sort of opening up that sort of creative aspect but it also was part of that we started doing visioning and um, vision boards separately and I also trained as a life coach as well so a big part of that was visualization so without knowing it I started to spend more time in quiet actually visualizing mm. the life I wanted to live because I started thinking about well you know you know what you don't want but what do you want to leave? <laughs> so and it wasn't about the doing I know what you're saying there I mean obviously there's action that has to come off you know sometimes to support that when you're in alignment but it was around my intent of um describing it I was getting clear through being in the silence um, maybe it's slightly different. I, I, I'm not sure, but I, I started to see quite clearly um, a life that I wanted to to live. And it, I didn't start by actively running around doing. It's very interesting. It sort of just, um, it sort of showed itself. And, mm. and maybe that is, I, I'm not sure now if I'm explaining that very well, but it sort of was being brought into that silence and at the same time, I hadn't looked at it as being the observer, but that is, um, yeah, that is probably because that's what was happening at the time because I wasn't able to do anything. <laughs> um, so in another way, something was starting to shift and I was starting, yeah, so it does make a lot of sense. Um, no, I think that's a very yeah. good, very good example of that in, in practice um mm. and how you know it's a really different approach to moving forward in your life from like setting you know setting goals setting yourself tasks okay i'm here i want to get to there what do i need mm. to do you know mm. it's more so it's mm. a much more receptive it's a more yes. receptive it's a more yin it's a more yes. feminine and when i and I know that you understand this and probably anyone that watches this also understands this but when we talk about feminine and masculine we're not really talking about gender we're talking about that active energy of the masculine and that more receptive energy of the feminine um, which we all embody um, and then yeah once that receptivity has happened and you kind of you you kind of move into that realm of potential then maybe that masculine kind of energy then starts to become relevant in making things happen and that's that kind of kind of yeah. yin, yin yang yeah. balance of those polarities yeah. isn't it yeah. Yeah, yeah i had heard somewhere it's spoken as well about this law of inspired action this is a, these mm. are other principles that maybe have 
you know, people have just found a way of capturing and putting words on. But yeah. I thought that was really nice because that's describing exactly that's, what you said. It's exactly that, that isn't yeah, it? Isn't it? You know, and when action is inspired, it's not effort. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, we did, it's not a job. Mm -hmm. If you, if anyone's doing a job, then they're doing the wrong thing. You know, mm -hmm. life's about, yes, mm -hmm. having your work, yeah. but your work is a purpose. It's about a purpose. When you have a sense of purpose, whether it's building a house, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's cooking a meal, whether it's, you know, the kind of work that you do, then there's no real effort involved. It comes from a place of inspired inspiration. The word yeah. inspiration means when spirit comes in. So yeah. when spirit comes yeah. into us, you know, this is when we're in the grace you know, mm -hmm. when we're in the grace of God and, and or the Holy yeah. Spirit, some, you know, some people, you know, might refer to that as the Holy Spirit as well. In Reiki, we refer to that as the key, the energy mm -hmm. of all that is. So many different cultures use different words to describe that. But again, once you are aligned with that energy and that energy is literally flowing through you isn't it you know mm -hmm. it's uh, mm -hmm. you know people use words like channeling like i great a mm -hmm. lot of many great artists or like you you've written you know your your amazing book for example um you know and i've heard you say about how that just kind of like the words just flowed through you flowed, flows yeah yeah flowed is the right yeah and it was a very just, new experience for me, Simon. I yeah. hadn't ever experienced, I think, you know, isn't that yeah. the clues? Uh, they're the clues in our lives when things are flowing. Exactly. You know, they're the, the nuggets to sort of follow. Exactly. I often feel that mm. life is it's like surfing. And you find that sweet spot on the wave where you're just cruising effortlessly. And then you know, you know that everything's in alignment. If it's stressful, mm. if it's hard work, if it's not mm. working out, then change because it's not it's not working. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that change means doing nothing, you know? And mm. just so yeah. great. So that was that's the first law that I've kind of identified. The second one is the law of giving. Mm. And this this is a similar kind of shift in perception to the first one which is rather than what can i get it's what can i give and when we when we change our perspective because again that's not what we're taught it's always about what can we get i want this how can i get it what are my steps from here to here to get what i want so the law of giving is the more we give the more we receive yeah Sometimes we give in, sometimes we receive in a very kind of di directly correlated way to the way in which we give. But oftentimes it's something very different, you know? Yeah. Does, that, does that make sense? It doesn't mean that, you know, if I want money, I have to go and give someone money to get the money I want. It, it's just that it's the energy of giving. Mm, it yeah. has to see the natural laws are all mm. about balance this is taoism yeah. everything yeah. has to has mm. to come to balance so if you mm. give that creates a space that has to be fulfilled you know yeah. it's just yeah. inevitable so yeah. i know for myself i am every day every moment i'm looking for an opportunity to give whether, mm. whether it's materially, whether it's of my time, whether it's my mm. attention, you mm. know, whether it's a compliment, yeah. whether it's a smile, whether, it, whether I'm driving, al driving along and I just stop to let someone go. Anything, any, it's the energetics mm. of this. If you're a multi-billionaire and give someone you know, a hundred euros, it means nothing to you. So it's not about quantity, it's about the energetics of it. Mm -hmm. But if you've got yeah. 50 cents in your pocket and you give that to a homeless person in your street and that's everything that you've got, then that has mm -hmm. more energetic impact than the millionaire that gives the hundred 
you know yeah. so yeah and it's about so it's about the intention and you can't you can't fool the universe that's why these mm. are laws because they're absolute mm. so you can't like well i don't really want to give but i'll give because i know i'm going to get something back later that won't work it has to come from yeah. a very <laughs> genuine higher yeah yeah a very genuine kind of place yeah yeah so what that's do you think wonderful that? oh yeah i mean again you're just putting words to a lot of things i've been experiencing and i had written about and this uh one of the chapters around abundance because it was something and not just financially abundance in general abundance. because it was something and i really struggled with writing about it because i really hadn't um experienced it in a sense or understood it in my life um and it's really been the journey for me that 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 lack you know when you're living from the ego and the fear and uh, like exactly as you described i'll never have enough and it's dog eat dog and whatever in that shift since i've been sick and that that opening up that has happened to me and that just feeling that 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 uh connection with spirit and it's really shifted me into a feeling of wanting to be of service in the world that's the only way i can describe it like really and that no understanding the energetics of it because exactly like you said there like a lot of days if i have to go out doing which i do for my mother the grocery shopping i just love like having a chat or putting a smile on someone's face or there's sort of a very there's a lovely flow that's sort of come into my life from understanding that um and even though my life is very different and to people who live and the way I live might look like it's not as ab abundant it's actually much more there's a lovely flow of um and it is exactly as you're describing it's not this if I give this I'll get this back it's coming from a very different place I I I have no desire or I'm not I'm not able to live from the place I used to live because mm. it was it, it's it's eventually it burns itself out or mm. it's just as you said it's not there is a law around this um a natural law and I'm really experiencing it I mm. I'm more and more is coming back to me and I'm not doing anything to get that you know if you know what I mean it's just mm. um yeah it's that's a beautiful way to describe it um it's just it's showing up as wanting to be of service for me or wanting to do that. It's not it's not a desire. Um, and there's a trust, isn't there? There, you, I mean, when you come into this place, there has to be a higher trust in something greater. I mean, and none of this unless you would, I, I think you have to be in a place of understanding that there is a greater force. There is something greater that is governing these laws, you know, because if you don't, like you said, you can't beat the system. It's not something like if I do this, I'll get something back. Um, it's just yeah. So it yeah it makes total sense. Yeah, there's there definitely needs to be faith here, doesn't there? And, mm. a, and a degree of surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. Um, yeah, you were just kind of referring to abundance there, and of course the the opposite of that is lack. And both of these, they are, they're a state of being. They have nothing to do with what you do or you don't have. I know people that have a lot materially, and, but they're not abundant within themselves. They, they are fearful of the loss of what they have. And the million that they've got isn't enough, but they'll be happy when they've got two million. That's their kind of state of being. Equally, I know people that have very little, but are very abundant, yeah. you know, and so, yeah, yeah. So I think that's just really, really worth adding. And one of the paradoxes that I've found in my life is that I gave up everything to find the abundance that I now feel. And then that abundance that I do now feel is manifesting in ways in my life that I could never have strategized and planned and tried to make happen mm. myself, you know, but mm. I had to go through that process of letting go of everything. And it's interesting, isn't it? If you look at 
um, those kind of archetypal stories of, say, like the Buddha. The Buddha was born a prince, mm. and he lived in a he lived in a palace, didn't he? And he had yeah. he had everything um, materially, yeah. but he had to go through this process of leaving the palace and and giving up everything to find but he didn't find enlightenment until he found the middle way and you can you can kind of read that as a as a parable a parable for all of all of us you know um mm. and certainly it's a story that i can relate to um so this isn't about a rejection of the material world, you know, because I do believe that we are here to fully enjoy and engage with this, you know, the people that are like, oh, I hate this 3D, I can't wait to get off here, go off on a spaceship or whatever. I don't, <laughs> that doesn't resonate with me. It's amazing here. No. It's, it's a fantastic yeah. place. Yeah, yeah you know? I agree. Yeah, it really is. And yeah, you know, and it, and there is so much abundance around. There really, really is, you know. But you've got to be able to see that. You've got to be able to really appreciate that and be in. So, yeah, if, yeah so if we're, you know, if we're living from this perspective of what can I get, you know, which means that want, if you look at the word want, the word want means I'm wanting. It means I have a mm. lack. There's a lack, isn't there? Mm. You know? mm. Um, mm. So if you're living from that place, then you're in a kind of lack consciousness or poverty consciousness. Whereas if you're always giving, you're coming from a place, well, I've, I've got so much to give, you know, mm. and the universe will always mm. provide you more to give. So then you then you're in that kind of abundance consciousness. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's fun. That's fantastic. And but doesn't that ha like for me? And I definitely was living from a lack, yeah. um, a place of lack because, like you said, I had more materially than I ever have now. And I'm there's nothing again. I'm not. I needed to come back into balance. And as I am, I'm enjoying more materially again. But the sort of nice. I understand why I had to be shown these different ways of living so could I could appreciate and come back into balance. So I'm finding myself coming back into balance, but I had to go um, from having, and it's not just materially, a, that just was a manifestation of it, but, you know, it was in every sense. But I think that has come through, obviously you have to have that connection to the greater universe or the understanding of that, as you said, that, um, that sort of... The, there's no, there's, once you're in recognition of it, but I wasn't, you know, when we're separate, mm. isn't that part of that separate sense of separation? Yeah. Everything is limited and it's I, it's up to me, the ego person to go running around, filling up my tank again. <laughs> um, well, and that's it. If you look at the story of the Buddha, it was also mm. the, the death of the ego that he had to go mm. through to be able to find this middle way. So I think mm. it's inevitable if you, like a pendulum, if you've swung yeah. too far one way, it's inevitable that there has to be a counter swing almost to the other mm. extreme. And then eventually yeah. you come back into the middle and find yeah. that kind of middle way. Um, mm. Yeah. And I can relate yeah, to, beautiful. yeah, I can definitely relate to that as well. I'm going to go on to the, um, the next of the laws, um, mm -hmm. which is the law of gratitude. And mm. I, this is almost, if I, the most important, I don't know. Um, I feel that this is the best starting point. If you're listening to this, if you're like so far out of alignment with who you are, with nature you know and you're really experiencing um 
stress, maybe um, physical challenges, challenges in your life. I think this is the best starting point, gratitude, you know? And there's a saying, isn't there, in English, that your, your cup is either half full or half empty, and it's the same cup, you know? And we've really yeah. got a choice. We've always got something to be grateful for. If you've got two legs, you can be grateful for two legs. If you've got one leg, you can be grateful for the leg you've still got. You know, we've always got something to be grateful for. And the very first thing that I say every morning as I become conscious is thank you. It's the very first word that I say. And I was taught this by, um, oh, what was he called? Beautiful, beautiful man. He was a, pub, a public teacher, Wayne, Wayne Dyer. Wayne, oh, Wayne yeah, Dyer. I loved it. And he Beautiful used to man. describe how, as he put each slipper on, he would say thank you mm. in the morning. And with each step he took, he would say thank you. And I remember listening mm. to that and thinking, wow. Mm. And he was, he was just such a beautiful, oh. beautiful, beautiful man. And um, it's, yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, the law of gratitude, always feel grateful. The more that you feel grateful, the more you receive the things to feel grateful for. Don't wait to receive something before you feel the gratitude. Feel the gratitude first. Yeah, that's beautiful. And it's exactly, exactly what I, you know, you're just really reconfirming to me everything I've been learning, like I was saying to you before this conversation, like all, and a lot of them probably show up in my writing because I didn't really know what they were, but I was trying to to articulate the shift in me. And exactly that, I had no sense of gratitude. And it's amazing, mm. the minute I got cancer, I suddenly became very grateful for everything you know, my life. And I found Wayne Dyer, it's very interesting when you say that, he saved my life, I think, mm. as well, because literally I devoured everything of his. He just mm. showed up in my life when I was sick and I was lying on the couch and I was reading and watching and learning. Mm. And that was one of the big um, lessons. And and I, and I you have to, you know, when I, I suppose when you start off, if you don't feel it, you know, as you said, you know, you might go, oh, I'm not, I'm not grateful, but, you know, or you're, you're sort of saying it maybe without, but I really started to, something, maybe it was something had to be taken from me, I don't know, to sort of really step into just the, the gratitude for being alive, for breathing, for, um, and being slowed down, because when you're going so fast, I, 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 everything was just moving so fast, I didn't even experience anything to be grateful for, yeah. Um. And like the law of giving, like going out now, I found myself after I was, was sick, just going out for a walk and just go, oh, my God, I never really appreciated. I live here by the sea. Um, so just, yeah, the, 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 the simple things, the more you're grateful isn't exactly that, the more and, there is to be grateful for. And or you recognize it. Yeah, sometimes we need to be on the verge of losing what we have to realize what we have, you know? Mm. And maybe that's part of the role that disease plays in our mm. life as well too, you know? Even, yeah. the, even if it's a headache, even if you've got yeah. a cracking headache, that is so debilitating. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. we take it for granted not having a headache and being able to just get know. on, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, that's um, so true. Yeah, so, true. so I'm, yeah. I, I know you and I could chat about these for, I know. forever, but I'm going to just crack on through these. Yeah. Um, so the next law that on my list is the law of preparation and expectation. And I, I, someone who teaches these the really brilliantly in her books is Florence Scovel Shin who was a writer back in the early 20th century. She was one of the early kind of spiritual writers. She wrote an amazing book called The Game of Life and How to Play It. Yeah. And ba basically, yeah. right, so this, you'll remember this. So this is really, really simple, but so, so important, so profound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prepare, prepare and ex prepare for whatever it is that you wish to experience 
and expect to receive it. And the opposite is also true. So if you are preparing for a rainy day, you're going to get a rainy day. So never save for a rainy day. Yeah? <laughs> How many people do that? We're taught that from an early age. You've got to be safe. Mm. You know, mm. all that you've got to have a um, health insurance and all this stuff. And actually, mm. what that system is doing is preparing you for disease. It's preparing you for being debilitated when you're old age, when you retire, because you need a pension fund and all of these things. So let's do the opposite. Let's prepare. I, I'll give you an example of this, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm setting up a new retreat at the moment, uh, which will be open next year. And um, mm -hmm. we were deciding how many yoga mats that we need to buy. Now, at the moment, we haven't got any customers. But I'm like, well, let's buy 20 yoga mats. Because if we haven't got 20 yoga mats, we can't have 20 customers. If I just say, oh, well, I'll just buy two yoga mats until we get more customers. I'm never going to get mm -hmm. more customers. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So yeah. Yeah. we have to apply this in all the aspects of our life. Another way of saying this is live as if it's already happening. You know, mm -hmm. whatever it is you know, yes. that you wish to experience. And if it is about material wealth, then live as if you already have that, you know? So, mm. you know, but if, you, if, if you're, if having, if having financial abundance is a goal that you have, but then you're kind of, you know, you're going shopping, looking for the discounted food and saying, no, no, I'm not going to get that because I can't afford it or whatever. You're not in the vibration of that abundance. So you've got to be in the vibration of the abundance. So expectation is like, it's, it's, it's being in that vibration of it's already done, isn't it? It's like, yeah. it's, a, it's a done deal. If you expect something, it's like, well, it's done. It's yeah. happening, you know. So those are the that's the law of preparation and expectation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I totally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. The. It's like the envisioning as well, isn't it? There are all there's a lot of overlap there. You know. Oh, completely. When you were saying, because yeah, um, and it's funny because I have sort of visioned a life. It just has come sort of intuitively to me mm. and naturally i'm almost living it without realizing it and mm. i would have in the past gone oh i have to save and i have to do this and i have to do that and i have to do whatever but now i'm just sort of assume it's almost subconsciously just remind me there i'm starting to live it even though it looks different to maybe what you know because there is a you know it, it's happening in a different way but that's sort of the the wonder or the miracle of the universe it, it, but it, it is actually happening it's, you know so it's, it's also mm. i think it was florence scoville shin as well too that called this active faith so mm. it's 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 your it's basing your actions on your faith your faith that what you wish to experience is going to experience she gives an example in her book i think of a woman that um she doesn't have a home but she she really wishes to have a home so she goes out and buys curtains that was mm. one of an example in her book you know so it's it's putting it's applying action then to your to this to your faith as well so really having enough belief to yeah. you know to yeah. Uh, yeah to act on that belief um the next law which in a way all of these definitely relate to is what we can call the law of attraction and i know this is spoken about a lot Rhonda burns did the book law of attraction years ago and everything but to put it very 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 simply what what we put our minds to will manifest and that is goes equally for the things that we don't want 
And this is where, and this is where so many people fall down with this because they focus on what they don't want and they experience that. Um, and as we said before, the word wanting is just means means lack. So wanting something also doesn't work as well. Mm. So we have to focus our minds and our our attention where you know attention yeah. and intention kind of sound very similar don't we so we have to um frozen. have i frozen yeah it just froze a few times yeah okay so yeah. Uh, yeah the words attention and intention are very similar mm. so you know mm. we have to put our attention on our intentions mm -hmm. so this has got nothing to do with the word want and what you don't mm -hmm. want you know and the more focused and single-minded you we are the more precise and more quickly the manifestation and the trouble for most of us is that we don't hold our focus that our minds are all mm -hmm. over the place and we don't mm -hmm. have faith we don't believe you know, and and that and so our external reality just reflects that back to us, which is why for most people they're experiencing being on a roller coaster because their minds are all over the place. So, mm -hmm. so this again is why we have to learn to meditate, to still the mind, to focus the mind, yeah, to yeah. visualize, and so in a very simple way, that's the law of attraction the energy that we put out like a magnet attracts back to us experiences relationships material stuff that actually resonate with yeah. that frequency that we are sending out so each of us is like a magnet literally attracting the experience that we have yeah 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 that's lovely to use that word magnet because yeah it's not just as you said it's 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 yeah yeah it's the frequency isn't it it's really up, we're it, putting out it's all yeah. frequency and the other thing mm. i want to add to this which is very very important is to not to talk about your intentions or to be and i tell you why because you just lose the energy. You're just wasting the energy. How many people do you know that do that? Or how many times have you done that in your life? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I've got this great idea, that great idea. Nothing happens because in the words, you've just, it's like you've scattered. It doesn't Florence so the, yeah, sorry. Yes. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Sorry, just, yeah. I think yeah. Florence Sogold Sachin talks Shin. about that, doesn't she? She's it scattering your it energy is. out. Or, and it's isn't so, it? yeah. and it's so mm. true. That, that doesn't mean, I mean, our words are important. Our words, we, we, we are casting spells with our words. Yeah. Mm. So setting that intention to yourself and maybe using those words um, as some kind of kind of affirmation or affirmation as Mark Atwood te taught us, which I thought was a brilliant tool, which I've been using, then that's differently than just going round like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, and, and then nothing happens. Yeah. So it's really mm. important that we contain our energy. Now, in tantric practices, men are taught to um not to waste their seed because it's this is part of the same energy it's mm -hmm. exactly the same energy and mm -hmm. without being crude mm -hmm. the, you know when you go around talking about what you can do and everything it's like it's like masturbation you're just you're just mm -hmm. wasting your energy and spilling your yeah. seed you know yeah 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 that's yeah so I just I wanted to totally get that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it, it, I've learned that I think as well from Florent reading one of her books, um, because I used to do that. It was almost out of 
um, a lack of uh, an insecurity, I'll start saying this to everyone and, you know, then they'll reassure me. But then I would run out of steam. And I learned that even when I started writing, I needed the energy to to sort of direct that into what what was coming through me. And if I was going off telling, I never said to anyone, um, really, you know, oh yeah, I'm writing, but I kept it quite contained. Mm. And it was from reading what she said, you know, there is a time and a place when we need to talk about things. And yes, maybe we need support, but that's fantastic. I hadn't, um, yeah, I hadn't thought about that in a long time. That's yeah, that's really good. Yeah, great, mm. good. Yeah, I really hope by doing this, anyone that's listening, oh, that this, yeah. that this, anyone that's listening, that this will just kind of light a few light bulbs mm. and. Maybe remind us of things that we already know. These are yeah. natural laws, so we inherently yeah. get this. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's good just to, you know, to, to put these into words. Um, the next law, as above, so below, as within, mm. so without, mm. you know. Mm. So we live in a fractal reality. Um, and so our our external experience is a reflection back to us of our internal way of being. So if your life out there is not working for you, rather than wasting a load of energy trying to change everyone and everything, just look at how you can change yourself. Just bring yourself into alignment. When I teach Reiki, this is one of the first things I teach at Reiki level one, which is about self-healing, because our only our only work in life is to maintain our own inner balance and centeredness. Because when we do that, everything else just falls into place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. so um, I'm going to just... As people say, yeah, yeah, we'll go through quickly. Isn't it like, though, just very quickly say the, I know people keep saying about the movie, but just the movie of your life. That's how I can relate to it. Like, what's going on in my world around me now? Because that's totally, you know, that's just a reflection of what's happening in here, whatever is showing up in. Exactly. Nice analogy exactly. Right and, it. you know, how many mm. people, and I know I've done this in the past, like trying to change everyone and everything. And it's exhausting mm -hmm. and you might get you might get that situation fixed but then the other one goes wrong yeah. you know <laughs> and then we live and and then we live in this like well when everything's in order then i'll be i'll be able to relax i'll be happy and it doesn't it never is you know yeah. it no. never is no. So you have to start yeah. in here yeah. and then everything does fall into place yeah. okay the seventh law which is the law of karma. Or we could replace the word karma with comeback. It's the law of comeback. So very, very simply, whatever we, whatever we reap, we will later sow. And it's an energetic thing. This isn't about judgment, morals, ethics. Yeah? There is a saying yeah. in English that some people can get away with murder. And some people can get away with murder because emotionally it just does not phase them in the slightest. So our emotions are our language with the universe. I could step on a, on a spider and be traumatized. So there'll be more karma in that for someone else who, who goes out, punches someone and thinks they deserve it and goes back and has another beer. Because energetically, for me, the emotional consequence of that for me was greater than for the other person. This is, I'm only sharing with you what yeah. I okay. understand yeah. by karma. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, it's an equally. You know, e e equally, I'm trying to. Uh, e equally, I can see a fly trapped in the room, and I'll spend 10 minutes trying to get that fly out of the room. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'll feel so, such a sense of achievement and a joy at doing that, that that's the vibration that I have set loose 
that is going to bring something back to me. Whereas someone else could see that fly and just go, God, that's annoying and squat it, not think a thing about it. Yeah. And they're not going to suffer mm, any yeah. karma for that. Yeah. So uh, this is my, this is my mm. understanding. It. So I think we have to get away from like morals and what's right and wrong. And, and, and as I say, ethics with this, it's more about where are you emotionally in your actions, in your words, in your thoughts, yeah. you know, okay. and that brings up another interesting point is like, if you do something which on the face of it, it's a good thing, but it's not where your mind's at, maybe there's a strategy in there that's mm. malevolent, where's the karma in that, you know, whereas on the inverse of that, is that you could, you could run someone over and kill them in your car, but it was completely unintentional, totally an accident. Where's the karma in that? So again, it's all about the emotional state that you're in. Um, I just, I want to okay. offer that as my yeah, yeah, understanding yeah. of karma. Yeah, no, I get, I, okay. yeah. Is there a sort of a truth or coming from a place of a very... Um, integrity or something that like is an example if you were having an argument or a, a discussion with someone and you came away very upset affected by and the other person might walk away and feel nothing so you know if there was an interaction or an exchange so is it yeah you know it's just i have to you you yeah. you see a child at the side of the road and there's a there's a car hurtling along the child's are meant to about to run out you go and grab the child and throw it in the bush behind your action is you've thrown a child in the bush but you just saved it from the car mm. so where mm. was your intention where was your yeah. heart yeah in yeah. that do you know what i mean so yeah 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 this is for me mm -hmm. this no, is that, that's for really, me yeah i wanted to thank you no that's yeah and then um, the law of least effort. I love this one. This is, yeah. again, this is Taoism, flow like water. Mm. You know, if there's an obstacle in the way, just flow around it. Don't beat yourself mm. up trying to get through it. I wrote, you know, paradoxically, the water will eventually wear that rock away, but it takes time, you know? Mm. So if there's an obstacle in your life, then it's just not meant to happen. So if I just take a different route, you know? Isn't so if, it meant to be, isn't it effortless yeah. and easy? They, you know, yeah. I've often, you know, Absolutely. whatever's effortless. And I love that. That's my greatest, um, I suppose, law I live by is flow. Flow, yeah. really. Absolutely. You know, and again, as much that's, as possible. again, that's much more that kind of ener feminine energy, isn't it? You know, mm. connecting mm. with that feminine energy. The mm. the masculine energy is the right. There's a rock in the way. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick the shit out of this rock. I'm gonna blow it up. And I you know, was doing that for years. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that again it creates inertia, it creates stress, mm. there's resistance, you know? Yeah. So this and disease again. Dis ease, mm. lack of ease. Yeah. Mm. So this law of least effort, which is also we could say we could call it the law of surrender, or you know, the law. Mm. Yeah. Um the mm. next law, I'm gonna really finish these quickly now because I'm keeping yeah. an eye on the clock. Yeah. The law of intention and desire. And this, if we replace wanting with desire and intention, it's a very different energy. And desire isn't, oh, I really want a new Gucci. That's not desire. That may be what the marketing people tell us is desire. That's not desire. Desire comes up Desire comes up in your belly, doesn't it? If you've ever met someone and fallen in love, you know what desire is. If you've ever seen the most amazing chocolate cake, you know what desire is. For me, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a chocoholic. But no, seriously, like we know, we all know what desire feels like. It just comes and takes us. You don't have to create it. You don't have to look for it. It's not, you know, it just comes. 
you know, and then when you marry that desire with an intention, that's a very, very powerful force. And it's a very different force than just wanting, you know, mm. so, and then like the inspired action, sorry, isn't it, it is. a little bit? It's because it's coming from that place, not these, a lower. These are all, in, these are all interconnected, you know, I mean, mm. um, and then what I just kind of add to that almost immediately is the law of detachment, because mm. once you've experienced that desire and you've set that intention, you then have to detach from the outcome because paradoxically your attachment creates resistance. I want, I want, I want. It's like you're waiting for the phone to call and you're sitting by the phone, looking at the phone. It will never call. But if you go, if you if you go away and go off and do something else when you're waiting for that important call, sure enough, the phone will call while you've forgotten about it. That is just how energy works. If you if you fancy mm. if you fancy someone else, you know, uh, a guy, a woman, whatever, and um, and you and you're like you know, so attached to being with them, they will feel that they will back off. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, if you feel that desire, but you detached to any outcome, that 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 is magnetic, they will come to you. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works. I'm going to move on because we just had the sure. 10 minute thing. Yeah. Because um, I'm nearly there. I'm on the very last law now. <clears throat> which is the law of Dharma. And Dharma is purpose. We all have our own unique purpose. And realizing that purpose in a way is the consequence of putting all these other laws or applying all these other laws. So in a way, we could say that, dar yeah, Dharma or dark because everyone wants to know their purpose. Like everyone's like, you know, I know for myself in my kind of like healing and pra coaching practice, it's probably the most asked thing. I, I want to know what my purpose is. I know I've got a purpose in life. I don't know what it is. And it, for sure, we all do. And when we don't live our purpose, that makes us sick, you know, because... Mm -hmm. It's like a flower knows its purpose. Its purpose is to grow and blossom and be a flower. It doesn't, it has no resistance to doing that. It doesn't think about it. It's not waking up every day going, God, I wonder what my purpose is in life. But we do that because we struggle and we're just like, again, going back to the beginning of the conversation, all this conditioning about what we think we should or we shouldn't and everything, you know? But again, like a flower, if we're just living those natural laws, that purpose, we will each kind of blossom. And one mm. more thing I want to add, and then I'll mm -hmm. stop talking, mm. is that without doubt, for each of us, our purpose is to be in service. And if mm. every single person on this planet lived their dharma, in service what an amazing place it would be because there'd be eight billion people eight billion people in service i, I would have eight billion people in service to me kind of thing do you know what i mean so we'd all be in service to each other rather than taking and trying to take and so that's i think i'll finish off there well oh, that's wonderful thank you simon that's just amazing um I've learned so much from listening to you and also it has really echoed a lot of my experience that I couldn't put words on either. You know, it's going, yeah, that's what that's what's been happening. And and just what you say there at the finish about your dharma, again, I go back to and I had learned this from Ray, Wayne Dyer. He talks about that was at the time talking about dharma and your purpose. And he said, it's bar your purpose is not just about what you do, but who are you? Mm -hmm. Who are you being as opposed to what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And that really shifted a lot for me because I was because we are again, like he said, conditioned, you know, career, job, nothing wrong with that, you know, finding. But it's about 
who are you? Like, it, it's not just about the doing. And I found that big shift for me out of the being comes the service. You know, mm. how can I serve? It, it, it's all connected. It's not, um, it's that, yeah, it, that, that, that was a big um, shift. And if we're all doing that, isn't it? It's just shining your light, being who you're meant to be in whatever situation you're in. Whether it's smiling at someone you meet in the supermarket or, um, you know, whatever, whatever the interaction is. That's yeah, beautiful. Thank you. That's, yeah. Uh, and we're, we're human beings, aren't we? Not human doings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's been that's been a long, uh, <laughs> a big lesson for me. And it's, it's yeah. uh, and it is, isn't it? This is the challenge of navigating the world we're in with who we are, because that's how it all ships. But mm. um, yeah. Mm more being more being so um i'm thinking that we should probably bring this to a close i'd really love to invite anyone that listens to this to um if if there are any kind of laws natural universal spiritual laws that they feel that we've missed please add them in the comments and we'll add them let's build a really kind of comprehensive um kind of um what's the right word manual here mm -hmm. we don't get taught this stuff can you imagine if no. you got taught this stuff yeah. so let's let's it's create a yeah. manual that we can we that we can share with people you know um so please um as i said i'm not an expert on this as celine says she's not an expert we're just sharing from our experience and what we kind of intuitively know and picked up along the way so let's let's build on this i'm going to as i say in the description below there should be a link to download a pdf um, of of this document that i kind of put together okay so please do that if if you'd like to and uh, great thanks celine that was just such a great conversation Thanks so much, Simon. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Thank yeah. you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.